And just like that, we're more than halfway over with our fall season, and the month of November is approaching rapidly, which means that we want to forecast what we can expect to see for the month of November 2024 in the United States. And in today's video, we're going to be going over all of this and more with your temperature anomaly forecast, your precipitation anomaly forecast, and your overall forecast map at the end of the video, all coming up in just a bit. All right, and on our first forecast map, we're taking a look at our temperature anomaly forecast map. Now, this map is designed to tell you what type of temperatures you're expecting to see. So whether that'll be normal, above average, or below average. Now, the area that I want you to focus on first is the light blue region there in the Western United States. Now, this area is called the slightly below average region on our forecast map because this area is where we're expecting you to have slightly below average conditions for your temperature. So throughout the month of November, we're expecting a lot more troughing in the West, which we're expecting that to keep things cooler so we're not really expecting anything super cool there. Obviously, the further south you get, it's going to be pretty warm. It's the desert and it's still fall. So it's still pretty steamy down there. But overall, I do believe we're going to be seeing some cooler conditions throughout much of the west. And a lot of these areas might see a slightly cooler trend throughout your month of November. Now, in that darker blue region, this is your below average temperature. So this is where you're expecting a bigger change or rather a more noticeable change. So while you may experience a slight decrease in your temperature in the light blue region, in the dark blue region, you're expecting a pretty noticeable difference in your temperature. Temperature. So you're going to notice when you walk outside, it's going to be a lot chillier, okay? Now this doesn't mean it's going to be in the negatives or anything like that, but this means that maybe about 5 to 10 degrees below average is what we're expecting at times throughout your November season. Now is it going to be like that every day? No, but overall I do believe we're going to have a lot cooler air in this area for the month of November. And again, the reasoning for that is that troughing that we're talking about. So we see the jet stream dip down, that's going to bring that cooler air from the north further down to the south, and it's going to keep things pretty cooler throughout there. And in the more interior region, which is obviously encompassed by the dark blue, that's where we're expecting the deeper cooling action to be throughout the month of November. Now to the east there, we see that light orange region. Now this is your slightly above average region. So you see a lot of the United States is actually encompassed by this. We see portions of the South Central United States, portion of the Great Lakes, and then over throughout much of the Eastern United States. So we are seeing that we're gonna be in more of a negative PNA phase, and we are seeing that we're in more of a westerly phase in our QBO, which means that with those westerly winds, we're expecting more warmer conditions and drier conditions down for the south, but we're also expecting more warmer conditions throughout much of the eastern United States and the central United States. So throughout the month of November, we're expecting your temperatures to be a little warmer than what you typically see. And you might have already noticed this. It's a lot warmer out there in the eastern United States. And I do believe that it's still going to be seasonably warmer throughout much of the month of November until we reach more of the latter half of the month when things might start to cool down a little bit more. Now in that final region there, we see that area of above average temperatures. This is for much of the Midwest and Great Lakes. This area I do believe is going to be more for the first half of the month. And then I think more as we transition to the second second half of the month, we're going to be headed into more of that slightly above average and then normal and then cooler as we head towards December. So I think it's going to be more of a switch up towards the end of the month, but I do believe for much of your November, you're going to be experiencing those above average and just overall a lot warmer of temperatures than what you typically expect to see in a November season. And if you're wondering why all of this is in the Eastern United States, we're expecting ridging. So this is the opposite of troughing. So we see the troughing in the West, but then we are expecting a bit of ridging in the East. And also we're just walking in a lot of that warmer air to the east and we're just keeping it kind of funneling up from the Gulf of Mexico and it's kind of sitting there in an area of high pressure over in the eastern half of the United States and I do believe that's going to kind of hold this here until we kind of get something to push all this out of the way and bring a lot more of that cooler air down from the north which is what's supposed to be typical for this time of year. All right now moving on to our next forecast map this is our precipitation anomaly forecast map. So this map is designed to tell you the type of precipitation patterns you're expecting to see in your month of November. So we're either looking at at below average or above average again with this map. Only this time it's for precipitation. So we're going to start off there for the Pacific Northwest where we see that light green region, a pretty broad light green region. This is your slightly above average precipitation pattern. And you can see here overall, we're expecting an active jet stream, particularly off of the Pacific coast. And we're expecting a lot of that moisture to funnel in off of the Pacific coast. Now we also see an interaction with the polar jet stream up from the north. Now this polar jet stream is also expecting to bring some storm systems with it. So it's going to be a pretty active precipitation pattern here. Not only do we have the polar jet stream bringing in those systems from the north and interacting with 
with that troughing pattern, but we also see that we have that moisture off of the Pacific Ocean being brought in by that Pacific jet, which is only going to enhance this process for an area of more precipitation than what is usually typical. Now this area, as you know, for this time of year is fairly wet, especially in La Nina, but this year we are expecting it to be slightly above average for a lot of these areas, and that's something we will have to monitor as we continue throughout the month of November. Now over there to the east, we also see slightly above average conditions, but this time for much of the Ohio Valley and Northeast. So I am expecting a bit more of an increase in precipitation than what we are seeing currently. So right now we're in more of a drier phase. We see a lot of that high pressure sticking there. And again, we have mentioned that's what's keeping those warmer temperatures in for November. Now I do believe that at times we will see some troughing up here for more of the northern portions of the eastern United States, which means that we could get some storm systems and pretty active storm tracks at that moving through this area and keeping things a little more wet than usual for your month of November. Now moving up there back to the Pacific Northwest, we do see an area of dark green. This is your above average precipitation. Now I do want you to note, yes, we already do see a lot of precipitation for this area, the Pacific Northwest, especially for this time of year. The month of November is one of the highest months of rainfall for areas including Seattle, Washington, and Portland, Oregon. However, this year for this area, I do believe we're going to see more of a notable increase in precipitation on top of that. So it's really going to be a very active pattern here. We're going to see a lot of moisture and a lot of systems coming off of the Pacific coastline and on this area. And then we also see what's known as orographical lifting, interacting with those mountains there. The warm, moist air is pushed up against the mountain slopes, and that's only going to cause a faster process of convection to occur, a repeated process, and it's going to continue to dump precipitation on these areas along the western tier of the Cascade Mountains, and it's going to keep things very wet here for much of the Pacific Northwest coast. Now, moving on to the final region of this forecast map, we do see down for the south central United States, in the southeastern United States, a light yellow region there. So this area is your slightly below average precipitation. And this is gonna be caused by a bit of a La Nina action here coming into play. So we already see La Nina starting to pick back up. This is pretty typical for La Nina, but I also am considering the QBO pattern into this as well. We're gonna see that more of a westerly phase again, as I was talking about for the month of November. And that's only going to influence drier conditions for the south central United States, as well as over there for the southeastern United States. All of these areas I do believe are going to be fairly drier. Now this isn't going to be a massive drought or anything like that, but overall just a drier pattern and less precipitation than what you're typically expecting, but nothing too extreme on that factor. All right, moving on to our final forecast map here. This is our overall forecast map, and this map is intended to give you a generalization of a region that you're going to belong with weather-wise for the month of November. Now starting off there for the Pacific Northwest, we see a dark green region. This is your wet region, so it's pretty self-explanatory. This region is going to be very wet throughout the month of November. Okay, it's going to be storm after storm, a lot of precipitation that can come in all forms. We could see rain, which I believe that's going to be the majority of your precipitation, but we also could see some mixed precipitation and maybe some snowfall depending on where you are up in that region. Obviously, the higher elevations are going to get a lot of snowfall. It's that time of year again, but you may also see in some of the valleys and some of the higher elevated areas that aren't on the peaks of the mountains. They could also be getting some of that snowfall as well, even into the later portions of the month. Now moving on to the white region there, we see winter wonderland. I figured this is pretty fit for this region because all of these areas are already getting snowfall. These are a lot of your ski regions, a lot of the Rocky Mountains, the Cascades, the Sierra Nevadas. They're already starting to get a lot of that snowfall up there. And we're seeing that colder pattern that we talked about where we're seeing the troughing in the West. That's gonna bring a lot more colder, stormier conditions. And with that, it's only gonna influence the snowfall even more. So I do believe that these areas are gonna be a winter wonderland for this month and even continuing on into December and January throughout our winter months but overall very snowy and much of a winter wonderland this month. All right, now just south of there, we see Kohler. Now this region isn't to be mistaken for anything that's going to be cold or chilly. Okay, a lot of these areas are still going to be hot, but overall, I do believe that it's gonna be colder weather overall. So maybe, let's say you're down in Phoenix, okay? And it's about 90 to 100 degrees this time of year. Maybe you'll be seeing more of those 80 to 90s. So a little bit cooler, nothing too extreme. It's not gonna be down near 30 or anything like that, but overall, just a nice bit of cooler air, depending on where you are. Obviously, the further north you go, up into Utah and even into southern Idaho, we're going to see those cooler conditions, even cooler than what we're talking about for the south. But overall, I do believe throughout much of this region, it's going to be overall cooler for this month. 
Now up there a little bit to the northeast, we see winter storms late. So this region overall, I think is gonna fit more into the warmer region for the beginning half of the month. But the reason I put you guys in this region is because I think we're gonna see a notable switch towards the end of the month. And here's why. So once we start getting that cooler air funneling down in this area, I do believe mixing with that stormy pattern off to the west, we're gonna see more of those storms move in as that high pressure gradually breaks down to the east. And I think overall, that's gonna lead to more of a notable stormy pattern up here and obviously with those cooler conditions we're going to see some more winter weather moving through so i do believe we're going to transition into that winter weather pattern headed into the latter half of the month of november and i do believe you'll be seeing more winter storms in the later part so i figured i'd give you that nice little surprise in here maybe give you something to look forward to if you are a snow lover sorry if you don't like snow that's likely going to be a big part of your future headed towards the end of this month and to the south there as we mentioned this is your warmer region so overall warmer conditions for this month it's not going to be overwhelmingly warm but i do believe that overall it's going to be warmer throughout your month of November and overall warmer conditions than what you're typically expecting to see this time of year. Now headed even further south we see rather dry. This again is not going to be any particular drought or anything like that. We're just seeing some drier conditions for this month. We're not expecting you to go into an extreme drought or anything like that but I do believe this is going to be a trendsetter for what this winter is going to be like because we're heading into La Nina and with that westerly phase in the QBO I do believe we're going to be seeing more drier conditions for the south central United States. Both La Nina and the westerly phase of the QBO kind of go hand in hand with that. And I do believe that's just going to keep things generally drier down there for the South. And for our final region there, for much of the Ohio Valley and Northeast, we see fairly wet. Now this region, as it states, I don't believe it's going to be as wet as the Pacific Northwest. That's going to be very wet throughout this month and even heading further into the winter. But overall, I do believe that this is going to be fairly wet conditions. So I think once we see more of that high pressure breaking down around this area, we're going to see more of those storm systems move down further South into the Ohio Valley and Northeast. And I do believe believe overall we'll see some more active precipitation patterns for this area nothing crazy we're not going to see tons and tons of precipitation but overall I think it's going to be a little more fairly active than what we would see for our late fall season here for this area. All right, I wanna thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you did enjoy this video, I would ask you to consider subscribing for more US forecasts free of charge. And I would ask you to consider following the Weather at a Glance official Facebook page for more inside information and complimentary personal forecasts when you message me on that Facebook page. I wanna give a huge shout out to our channel members, Chris Betty and Jay Case. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and what we do. And with that, I will see you in the next video.